Wow, what a week it's been. Things have been moving quickly now at the new shop. We got our final inspection, so now we can start officially working on videos in here, which is a good thing because we're totally out of the old shop now. If you're new here, let me quickly recap the last several of these vlogs. This is the old 400 square foot shop where we filmed nearly 500 videos over the better part of a decade. This is the new 5,000 square foot building I bought to film the next 500 videos in. Half of it is getting rented out to the post office because I'm an avid stamp collector, while the other half has been undergoing a transformation over the last three months. Now we've got the machines in and we're starting to build the cabinetry for the workstations that we'll need, and you'll see a lot of that in future vlogs. Now one thing some folks have commented about is how some YouTube channels have moved into bigger shops and suddenly their audience can't relate to them anymore. And I just want to tell you that is not going to happen here. This isn't going to be a production workshop. I didn't get all this space to make projects that you'll never make yourself. Rather, this will give us the extra room and the lighting and the logistics that we need to film more of the same small shop projects and tutorials that we've always made. For example, this past spring, we built this credenza and this storage bench in the small shop. These were big pieces of furniture, and it was a challenge to fit them in the small shop. Some of the work had to be done outside. I'm sure you've done some of that in your small shop. But my problem is unique in that we may be able to fit the projects in the small shop to build them, just like you do, but we can't properly film those builds in that shop space. There's no room for the cameras and the lights and the computers that we use to make high quality video. These shots in the yard, for example, could not have been done inside. There just wasn't enough room to get the cameras back from the project far enough to fit them all in. And as in any small shop, when we're working on a project, especially a piece of furniture or anything that's taking multiple days, there's no room for anything else. So the tip videos and the tutorial videos and the vlogs and all the stuff that we like to make for our audience gets neglected because we just don't have the room to do both. So this bigger shop isn't about making a bunch of fancy projects that you can't make. It's about being able to properly film more of the projects and the tutorials and the vlogs and the tips that we have always made. These are the things that have helped so many small shop woodworkers and that's what we intend to keep doing here. Another way we're maintaining that commitment to small shop woodworkers is the corner of the new shop. Right now, it's full of some past homemade tool projects. But we've set aside a 15 by 15 area here, less than the size of a one car garage. And here we'll be building a completely separate mini workshop. So we'll use this space to come up with new ideas for folks who share spaces in their garages or their basements with cars and bikes and lawnmowers. We'll be designing new benches, portable workstations, homemade tools, all the sort of things that small shop woodworkers love to hear about. So if you can't relate to the big shop, you certainly will be able to relate to this little shop. That's the plan for this new space, two workshops, where we can make a great deal of content for regular woodworkers. Of course, these shop vlog videos, which you can identify by green thumbnails on YouTube, are about the shops and the tools themselves. And that includes the bigger shop with the fancier tools. And one of the upgrades we made for that side of the shop includes a new jointer and a new planer. I went with Grizzly because I know a lot of our viewers use Grizzly tools and I've never used them before, so I figure I better become familiar with their quality. And after having carbide helical heads on our old joiner and planer, there was no way I was going back to straight knives. I didn't order these machines with the helical heads installed because I wanted to try out a new helical head brand, which is now available at mywoodcutters.com. This is called a Lux Cut Head, and it's similar to the Bird Shelix heads, which are the high quality heads that most people put in their machines. They're the ones we use in our other machines. Both heads benefit from a helical design that shears the wood fibers much more cleanly than straight knives, or even some of the cheaper helical heads that don't set their knives at an angle. They improve dust collection, they reduce sound, both last infinitely longer than the standard steel knives. We made a whole video about this, I'll link to it below. But the manufacturer of these Luxcut heads claimed that they use more precise machining on theirs, this is a very high quality head, 
and they add a superior rust resistant finish. You do not want your head rusting because that rust gets underneath the knives and that can cause you a lot of problems. I also noticed that they have improved the way the cutters are mounted. I've heard of many cases where folks rotate or replace their cutters and they don't get one properly seated because it can be a little tricky on some heads. So when they tighten the screw down, they've got one cutter that is sitting proud of the rest and that can leave a groove in their board or worse yet, you can end up breaking a cutter. The Lux Cut folks believe that their design makes it easier to align and seat those cutters without that risk. I also like that they included bearings with the heads. That's something the other brands leave out. It is hard enough to tear these machines down so you can install the heads. You may as well replace those bearings while you're at it. And LuxCut solves the biggest gripe that a lot of people have with other brands. These brands make heads in large batches which take a long time on one particular model. So you often have to wait weeks or even months until they make a batch of the model that you need. LuxCut stocks all the models that they make and they're adding more models all the time. So there's no long waits. So now that I've got the new Lux Cut head installed in the new planer and I've used it for a few projects behind the scenes, what do I think? Well, I think it performs just as well as the Bird Shelix heads in my old machines. Honestly, I can't see much difference in cut quality or any of the other things that have caused me to fall in love with these helical heads. I do like the extra benefits of the Lux Cut that I mentioned before, but I had no problem with my Shelix head. And I honestly would not hesitate to buy either Lux Cut or the Bird Shelix heads in the future. They both work really well. These are much better than some of those cheaper heads that are out there. The reason for this little discussion was really to let you know that if you're thinking of upgrading your jointer or your planer to a helical head, there's now more than one high quality option available to you. So consider the availability of each, the shipping time, and the other things I mentioned. You may even ask Stefan at mywoodcutters.com his advice on your particular machine. You're gonna find that his knowledge, which he gives freely, and the service they have, which is fantastic, is the kind of thing you want when you make a purchase of this magnitude, both in, let's face it, the expense, but also in the way it's going to totally change how your machines work. Now, before we end this shop vlog, I wanna address something that I've been getting a lot of questions about. The future of Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal e-magazine. If you've noticed, we haven't sent one out in quite a while and folks have been getting a little antsy about it. I wish I could tell you it's coming back on such and such a date, but I'm not sure yet. It was a huge, expensive, time-consuming project and it had a good run of about three years. If it does come back, it'll likely be in a different form, perhaps as a paid subscription to help cover some of the costs of producing it. And if we do that, it's going to include content that you can't get for free on our YouTube channel. I've even considered making it kind of a quarterly guide to improving your woodworking skills through a series of project articles with detailed step-by-step -step instructions. The idea would be to help woodworkers of various skill levels learn new techniques and try new things. Some folks have been making special video courses like that, where folks pay a fee to be walked through a certain series of projects. But it's difficult to take videos into the workshop with you, especially if you don't have an internet connection. Whereas an article with lots of photos and written instructions can just be printed out and put on the bench with you while you work. Whatever we do, our goal is to help people build new skills and try new things. So we'd want a progressive series of projects that would fit into different skill levels. And we'd wanna keep it affordable. Some of these courses I see just cost way too much for regular hobby level woodworkers in my opinion. Anyway, we're working on some new ideas for the e-magazine and if you have any ideas, leave them in the comments below. I love to read them while I sit back and have a cold one because we've earned it my friend. Mywoodcutters.com is the sort of small business I like to support. Stefan is a great guy and he can find you knives and cutters for almost any joiner, planer, shaper, or molding machine. And his are the best prices if you're planning to upgrade to a helical carbide cutter head. Please use the link below this video to check with him before you buy somewhere else. Some small businesses are just worth supporting. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.